it's 5 p.m. and you have just realized that the report you have been putting off is due tomorrow. It's time to buckle down, open your computer and check your phone. Maybe catch on your favorite YouTube channel. Actually, you should probably make dinner first. You, you usually like cooking though it's hard to enjoy with this work hanging over your head and oh, it's pretty late. Maybe you should just try again in the morning. This is the cycle of procrastination and we've all been there. But why do we keep procrastinating even when we know it's bad for us? To be clear, putting, off, putting something off isn't always procrastinating. Responsible time management requires deciding which tasks are important and which ones can wait. Procrastination is when we avoid a task we said we would do for no good reason despite expecting our behavior to bring negative consequences. Obviously, it's irrational to do something you expect to harm you. But ironically, procrastination is the, is the result. Our body is trying to, pro, uh, to protect us, specifically by avoiding a task we see as, I don't know, threatening. When you realize you need to write that report, your brain responds like it would, uh, that it's about to face an incoming threat. Your amygdala, a set of neurons involved in emotional processing and threat identification, releases hormones including adrenaline that kicks off a fear response. The distress-induced in panic can overpower the impulses from your prefrontal co co cortex, which typically help you think long-term and regulate your emotions. And in, the, and in the midst of this fight, flight or freeze response that you decide to handle the threat by, avoiding it, it in favor of some less stressful task. This response might seem extreme. After all, it's just a deadline, not a bad attack. But you are most likely to procrastinate tasks that evoke negative feelings such as dread, incompetence, and insecurity. Studies of, proc uh, of procrastinating university students have found participants were, were more likely to put off tasks they perceived as stressful and, and challenging. And the perception of how difficult the task is increases while you are putting it off. In one experiment, uh, studies were given reminders to study throughout the day and while they were studying, most, most reported that it wasn't so bad. But when they were procrastinating, they consistently rated the idea of studying as very, very stressful, making it difficult to, uh, to get started. Whatever the reason for procrastination, the, re the results though are always the same. Frequent procrastinators are likely to suffer from anxiety and depression, ongoing feelings of shame, higher, uh, higher stress levels and physical ailments which are associated with high stress. Worst of all, while procrastination hurts in the long run, it does temporarily reduce our, our uh, stress level, reinforcing it as a bodily response for coping with stressful tasks. So how can we break this cycle? Traditionally, people thought procrastinators need to cultivate discipline and practice strict time management. But today, many researchers feel the exact opposite for some reason. Being too hard on yourself can layer additional bad emotions onto a task, making the threat even more intense. So to shortcut this stress, to this stress response, we need to address and reduce these negative emotions. Some simple strategies include breaking a task into smaller elements or journaling about why it's, it's uh, stressing you out and addressing those underlying concerns. Try uh, removing nearby distractions that, are e that makes it easy to impulsively procrastinate. Because the culture that, per that perpetuates this uh, cycle of stress and procrastination does hurt us all in the long term.